On this second Sunday of Advent, we continue with our theme, How Does a Weary World Rejoice? I want to thank Pastor Ted Kunze for leading worship last Sunday and bringing you the good word. He did a wonderful job and set the stage perfectly to begin thinking about how we can rejoice amid a weary world. When I think of the word weary, what comes to my mind is last winter. Do you remember last winter? We had a ton of snow. By some estimates, the Minnesota winter of 2022-2023 was the second wettest on record. I remember shoveling and snow blowing a lot of snow at my house last year. Perhaps you were in the same boat. At some points, there was so much snow that I could barely reach the top of my daughter's Chevy Equinox to clear the snow off of her SUV. There were many days I would come back in from shoveling off the front steps and snow blowing the driveway and the sidewalk, and I would be plum old worn out. And yet, I didn't really feel weary until I saw the look on my neighbor's face. My neighbors are originally from Thailand. The husband teaches computer science at Gustavus. Coming from Thailand, they did not have to deal with cold and snow on a regular basis in their home country. But that's one of the benefits of living here in Minnesota. We are blessed with winter in this state. Early on each year, honestly now, I think, wow, the snow coming down is so pretty. Especially as Christmas approaches, I always love to see a nice coating of snow on the ground. It helps to set the mood for our Christmas services and family celebrations. That's early on. That's how I feel in December. By the time April rolls around, I have an entirely different attitude towards snow. By April, we may have already gotten 60, 70, 80, even 90 inches of snow. By that point in time, I am no longer enthralled with snow. The magic has worn off. I'm no longer thinking about how beautiful and peaceful and serene it is to look out of my family window and gaze at all that white stuff accumulating on the ground. Nope. By that time, I am feeling weary. To use Pastor Ted's definition of weary, I am ground down and worn out from four plus months of shoveling and snow blowing snow. The best image I can recall from last winter was coming in from the umpteenth time of clearing away the snow and looking over at my neighbor. I had just finished and he was just heading out to clear his part of our shared driveway and the look on his face just screamed weary. He was done with winter. The long winter had taken its toll. He was ground down and worn out from all the snow we got last winter. The look on his face said it all. I'm trapped in this winter and it never seems to end. That's what I mean by weary. And it's not just a feeling we get from dealing with snow here in our Minnesota winters. Weary is something that we can all experience as a part of our daily lives. For instance, when our children go to school, they are blessed with a good education. They and their teachers and staff also get exposed to all sorts of viruses and illnesses. Every year after school starts, they come home with a cold. After getting over their cold, then we get word from the school that there's strep throat going around. Then there's reports of lice or another outbreak of the latest variants of COVID. 
Then there's the flu, influenza A or B we must endure. And after dealing with coughing and runny noses and all the other bodily fluids that come with being sick, after a while, we begin to feel weary. You begin to feel ground down and worn out from being sick all the time. We feel stuck both by the winter outside of our homes and the illnesses affecting our families inside our homes. By mid-April, all I can think is, when will this winter be over and we can get outside into some sunlight and get healthy once more? Amen? Amen. In our Gospel reading for today, we hear about two women who were weary, Elizabeth and Mary. Pastor Ted preached about all that Elizabeth and Zachariah had to endure last week as an elderly couple who were childless. Now, being childless in ancient Israel was seen as a negative. People would talk. Something had to be wrong for a married couple not to have any children. So the gossips would start. Well, somebody has to be sick. Somebody must have sinned in order that they weren't given the blessing of children. That is, until suddenly they were. Zechariah served his rotation as a priest in the temple in Jerusalem. He went into the Holy of Holies to offer incense before God. And there he encountered the angel Gabriel. God had sent Gabriel to deliver good news. After so many years of being childless, he and Elizabeth were going to become parents. But Zechariah and Elizabeth were ground down by living through too many years of not having any children. They were worn out overhearing the town gossips whisper about the fact that they didn't have any kids. So don't point the finger of blame at poor old Zechariah when he was struggling to accept Gabriel's good news of their child that was being promised. We probably would have struggled to accept such good news in our lives too. Still, there's something we must remember as people of faith. When God says he's going to do something, God does it. God spoke and the world was created. God said he would make a great nation out of Sarah and Abraham, and God did so. God said he would deliver his people from their enslavement in ancient Egypt, and did so through Moses and Aaron and Miriam. So when God said Elizabeth and Zechariah would become parents, that's exactly what God meant. Which brings us to today's gospel lesson. When Zechariah's time of service in the temple was over, he went home. Elizabeth conceived a child and remained in seclusion for five months. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. Then we hear about Gabriel's visit to Elizabeth's cousin, Mary who was living way up north in the tiny town of Nazareth. Gabriel appeared to Mary. Now Mary, you have to remember, was a young, young woman, a virgin, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of King David. Most women back then were engaged to be married by the time they were 12 or 13 years old. So when I say Mary was young, I mean Mary was young. And it is to this young, engaged woman that Gabriel has some good news to deliver. Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. To which Mary said, 
wait, what? Mind blown. Boom. No, that's not actually in the Bible, right? Come on. Instead, Mary asked a very sensible question. She asked how this could be the case as she was still a virgin. So Gabriel explained, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And the good news continued. Gabriel said to Mary, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Confirmation students, take note. That is a great confirmation verse for all of you. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then Mary decided it was time to go on a little road trip. Mary left her tiny town of Nazareth in the northern part of Israel and headed way down south to visit her cousin Elizabeth in the hill country of Judea. Mary arrived at the house of Zechariah and greeted her cousin. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Weariness gets put on pause. Now these two women, these two cousins get to spend time together. They get to unpack all the miraculous events that have happened to them in their lives and the lives of their family. Despite their advanced age, Zachariah and Elizabeth have finally conceived a child. A six-month-old baby, in fact, who did a happy dance inside of his mom when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting. Mary had been blessed with the Son of God himself through the activity of the Holy Spirit. Both women were now able to find joy in connecting with one another. And you know what? So too can we. We will find joy in connecting with others in our daily lives. No matter if it's snowing so hard that it'll beat previous weather records, or if this is the fifth time your child has come home from school with a cold, we find joy in life by connecting with others. Do we not? We do. I was listening to NPR this week, and there are actually sociological studies that back this fact up, that by engaging with family and friends and neighbors and learning to play pickleball at the community center, we find joy in connecting with others. So while you're snowed in from the 20th snowstorm of the winter, pick up the phone. Connect with family and friends. When the weather isn't so bad, put on the coffee pot. Invite a good friend over and catch up on what's going on in their life. And while you're convalescing from the second bout of strep throat, have somebody put grandma or grandpa, or your aunts and uncles, your cousins on speakerphone so you can hear their voice and be restored in your joy. Let your joy be renewed even and especially amid your weariness. For God has blessed us with so many wonderful people in this world. God has blessed us with family and friends and neighbors and the Son of God himself. So as Pastor Ted said last week, I'm going to give you all a spoiler alert. Yes, Elizabeth and Zechariah were blessed with a son, John the Baptist, who went on to prepare the hearts and minds of the people for the coming of our Savior. Mary and Joseph were blessed with the Son of God himself, and we will celebrate Jesus' birth 
in just three short weeks. While we spend this time of Advent, waiting for this joyous and miraculous event to take place, recall today's lesson. You may feel ground down by life. You may be worn out by work or illness or loneliness. So I would suggest you do what Mary did. Go on a road trip. Or at the least, pick up the phone. Call a friend. Go out for a lunch date. Connect with those who are dear to you in your life. And God will bless your life with joy. Amen.